So I've mentioned a few times during the radio build that a missing part is uh, adding a good uh, audio bandpass filter after the phase shifter in the receive chain. Uh, as you heard from uh, when I was tuning around on the radio, you can hear a lot of uh, very high pitched tones, very low pitched tones, and a good audio bandpass filter is going to hopefully get rid of all that. Now, filter design, of course, can be done from first principles, um, a lot of math behind it, and I'll add a link for those of you who are interested in, in the mathematical approach. Uh, I'm going to quickly add that I can't do it from first principles, and so what I was looking for is basically a, a somewhere out there a piece of software that would help me uh, uh, design an audio bandpass filter without understanding all the underlying math. So. Fortunately, I found the, the site that you're looking at right, right now, and that comes from uh, Analog Devices. Uh, and it's uh, quite a, a useful little tool for developing uh, audio bandpass filters, uh, and low and high pass filters for that matter. So I'll provide a link to this site below, but uh, let me just walk you through at least how I've been using this uh, particular tool. So the first thing you want to check, that you want to uh, select is what type of filter you want, low pass, high pass, or band pass. So let's select the band pass filter. And then uh, going through the parameters here, and these are the parameters I used last time, but uh, um, uh, th these aren't the default values, but this is exactly what I want. So again, it's zero. Um, now, because uh, the, these are op amp filters, you can, uh, you can have gain in them. They are, they are active devices, uh, but I'll choose a zero dB uh, gain for the moment. Uh, the actual pass band size at the moment uh, is 3 kilohertz. Um, the stop band, uh, I've, I've got here 40 kilohertz at minus 40 dB. And then the center frequency, so the midpoint of the band pass filter at, at 2 kilohertz. So let's see what that looks like on, a, uh, on the chart here. So you can see here's the, uh, here's the, uh, the band pass part of the filter here. And here's the stop band way down here. So uh, now the minus 3 dB is at uh, uh, 1 kilohertz on the downside and around about uh, 4 kilohertz on the upside. Now, I really do need uh, uh, frequencies a bit below 1 kilohertz, but this is good enough for the moment. So that's the shape of the band pass filter. Um, and uh, so let's move on now to the components required. So let's just move that. So basically, uh, for the for each of these uh, each of these tabs in the uh, in the output here, you get to select this uh, this drop down. This drop down basically tells you, uh, you know, what, what what you're actually looking at here. So this is the uh, basically I've asked it to pick uh, components for me. Uh, I've got my voltage supply here between 12 and zero volts. Now the default is five and minus five here. Uh, but generally, I, you know, this is the, the kind of the voltage levels I have in my circuit. Now, when you have uh, uh, 12 and 0, you're going to have to supply a reference voltage that ideally is halfway between uh, 12 and 0, so around about 6 volts. So that's what this ref here is here, is basically you need to supply that mid-rail voltage to bias the uh, op amps correctly. Now, they, they do have a circuit down the bottom here that uh, is basically that reference voltage circuit that you can build up yourself, but I'm just going to simply use a resistor divider with a, uh, with a cap from the midpoint to ground. That's going to work well enough for my purposes. I'm not uh, building instrumentation level software here. So if you'll notice the resistor, these are the idealized resistor, val resistor and capacitor values here. You can actually go in and select your own resistor values. So you go to tolerances to do that, and obviously you can change the uh, tolerance of the capacitor, the resistor. Uh, this is the gain bandwidth of the op amp that you can change also. But what I've been changing primarily is the preferred series of the capacitor and the, the resistor. Uh, so you can select uh, here between for the capacitors E6, E12, or E24, and resistors has a similar selection here. So this is from... Uh, least precise to most precise. So you can see as you change that, 33 goes to 33.2, um, 100 goes to, well actually stays 100 there. So, but anyway, uh, so, so what I'll do is I'll select uh, uh, resistor and capacitor series values of E6 for both. And then this is the final circuit right here. So um, basically what, what I'm gonna do is 
Oh, one other thing too, I'm just going to use LM358s in this. I mean, obviously, you know, this uh, this is an analog digit devices site, so they're going to they're going to specify 80 devices here. So, uh, but I'm just going to use LM358s. Um, that's what I've got a, a large stock of, and and we'll see the output uh, once I've, I've built the circuit together. Um, so that's uh, coming right up. So here's the uh, circuit that I've built up here, and uh, and and this is this. Uh, uh, kind of phase shift network plus uh, there's an amplifier that goes here and then this is where my filter is going to go. So the kind of receive chain, it comes in through here, goes through the phase shift network, passes through the uh, the bandpass filter, and then it goes out, does some final ampl amplification out here, and then finally out uh, out, out the uh, the final audio side here. So here's the uh, the filter right here. There's my LM358 and the surrounding network of capacitors and resistors. So what I'm going to do is, uh, as you can see, I've got this hooked up to my signal generator. Here's the incoming signal here. I'm sampling the, out the output uh, with my oscilloscope. So what I'm going to do is, uh, let me just pan up to the uh, signal generator. As you can see, I've got it set around 2 kilohertz at the moment, 1 volt peak to peak. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show that signal on the oscilloscope using a variety of... Uh, I'll just basically uh, sweep through the frequencies and you'll be able to see the output. So let's start... Uh, you can see here it's uh, got a peak-to-peak -peak of about 1.18 volts here. So let me just change that uh, voltage level so it's around about 1 volt. So that'll be, that'll be, make it easier to see the uh, weather 3 dB... Uh, 3dB is so one volt peak to peak there. That's uh, two uh, two kilohertz. So right in the middle of the the pass band. So let's change that frequency down. Now what we're looking for is the 3dB point, and the 3dB point is at uh, precisely 0.707 of the uh, of the peak to peak. So that's what we're looking for. 0.707. So let me sweep down uh, 1900. 1500 uh, hertz and you can see I'm down at uh, 944 uh, uh, millivolts there so still in the pass band now down to 768 now it's getting close so that's 1.2 kilohertz let's go down again so now we've gone we've gone uh, too far down so let's uh, change the uh, signal generator so we're looking at around about uh, 1150 or thereabouts kilohertz yeah, so 1140 uh, hertz is the uh, is the 3 dB 3 dB point on the uh, on the downside. So let's do the same on the upside and see where the 3 dB point is on is on the uh, on the other side. So let me go uh, go back up. So now I'm at uh, 1200 hertz. Go back up to 2k. So we're back around a volt there. Let's keep going up. We're still in the pass band here. It's starting to uh, tail off now. So now we're at uh, 3.2 kilohertz. Getting close, 3.4 kilohertz. So let's just go down up a little bit from there. There, it's about as close as I'm going to get it. So that's uh, 0.704 of a volt. And you can see the, uh, the signal generator is... Uh, at 3.65 uh, kilohertz. So that's showing that I've got a attenuation. There's the 3 dB point is 3.65 uh, kilohertz on the upside and uh, 1.16 if I remember correctly on the downside. So the, the downsides, uh, that's a little bit high. I mean, really I kind of want that around uh, maybe 700 hertz, 600 hertz. So, uh, um, you know, obviously that comes from the most likely the tolerances of the resistors and capacitors plus the uh, performance of the op amp itself but that's good enough to uh, to put into circuit and see, see what we see uh, I mean obviously it's not uh, uh, that's an attenuation there that's not a, you know, it's not a complete negation of the signals below 1.1 kilohertz but but anyway what I'm going to do is uh, build up the remainder of the phase shift network um, and the final amplifier, we'll put it in the circuit and uh, we'll see the how it affects the performance of the radio.